it's time for the Maker's Challenge. So many beautiful rocks. That's a nice thing to find on my way out. Hi everybody, it's Kate from Katie Did. I am delighted to help kick off Theo Kellison's Maker's Challenge for this spring. Not very many of you know that in addition to loving rocks and, and well, doing my thing, right? I also am a potter. And so I thought it was probably time to combine two of my great loves, rocks and pottery. Today we're gonna to follow the process of how I make these mugs and these beautiful little cabochons that are in set and uh, come along. Clay is actually made of minerals, forming through weathering of silicate bearing rocks. Because silica is so common around the world, clay could be found in all parts of the globe. The process of kneading the clay like bread dough is called wedging. Wedging aligns the flat disc-like particles of the clay, gets rid of air pockets, and equalizes the density. Once we're done wedging, it's time to throw it on the wheel. I use an old Lockerbie kick wheel so I can keep throwing when civilization collapses. I'm not sure how that will work with my electric kiln, though. The clay I'm using today is a commercial low fire clay, which hardens at temperatures around 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. Although it looks gray here, when fired, it becomes a lovely soft white. Once you get the clay centered, which for me is the tricky part, you then have to open the clay. This part is easy if it's centered properly. And if it's not, well, you'll see. Try number two. This one goes much more smoothly. Once the clay has hardened a little bit, it's time for a trim and to make a spot for our beautiful stone. This looks like it'll work. I decided, because I have so much petrified wood and I love it so much, that I'm going to make a tree to hold on to the beautiful piece of rock that we're going to put here. So what I'm doing right now is called scoring. You're making lines in the clay and then we'll eventually get them wet. And that will allow clay that I put on top of it to stick without falling off. I discovered when originally playing around with this idea that having the stone simply put into the mug is not enough. It's not deep enough and I can't push it in enough without causing the mug to crack. So instead, I devised a number of different ways to put clay on top of and around where the stone is going to be set. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I think it's time to make a handle. This process is called pulling. Yes, I know it looks very, very naughty, but it is in fact a really good way to make nice shaped handles and potters all over the world use this technique. Now it's time for some more scoring, this time to adhere the handle to the mug. You wanna make sure that it's nice and tight because you don't want that mug falling off in someone's lap with a bunch of hot coffee. Now, after it's attached to the top here, I'm going to pull it a little bit more just to improve the shape and then attach it to the bottom.
now that we have a very nice shaped mug, I'm going to do some carving on the bottom here. I love the feel that this carving gives when you hold on to it, and so I do carving on a lot of the mugs that I make. If you're enjoying this video, click on the subscription button. I forgot to film filling the kiln, but you can assume that it's basically the same as emptying the kiln, only backwards. Those look like they turned out pretty nice. Okay. It's time for glazing. This is actually a black color that I'm putting in and then I'll wipe it off in order to leave the black in the little dents here. And then I covered it all with this lovely brown. Well, you'll see after it gets fired, the brown becomes much kind of less intense. Glazes are like that. It's rarely what you see is what you get. It's always just like Christmas when you open up the kiln. Oop. Let's see how we're doing here. This is the one. Nope, that's not the one. I have these on little stilts so that when the glaze melts, it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. Now it's time for some rocks. Let's take a look and see what we've got here. Petrified wood. Well, as long as that stays in one piece, that is going to be absolutely beautiful. The next step is to use a trim saw to cut off the extra rock. I'm cutting into a hexagon first and then trimming off the little edges. It's actually a very slow process. This video is sped up 20 times. Once I get it basically shaped, I head to the diamond wheel to make it more circular. I also soften the edges. After shaping enough of these cabochons, it's time for the tumbling. I'm lucky enough to have a vibratory tumbler, which takes much less time, but it's still kind of a tedious process. Step one is the coarse grit. This requires the most grit of any of the steps, and it takes a couple days. It's important to make sure the lids are on tightly on these. I've seen some people actually use bungee cords in order to secure them because they tend to pop off. Okay, step one done. Now we get to wash them. Here we go. Uh-oh. I forgot a step. It's really important at the end of each step to wash the rocks so that you don't have a mucky mess. I use just Dawn dish soap and some water. Stage two. My jar says 1200 grit, but I think it's less than that. Let's take a look. Here we go again. Now it's time for the polishing stage. This is always an exciting time. We're getting so close to them being shiny and beautiful. 
They always look great when they're wet. Okay, so these are dry and they're pretty shiny, but I'm going to put them back one more time, this time in a borax wash, just to get any kind of um, residue off of the stones. And I won't bore you with showing you that whole process. It's just the same as the rest of it. Well, that crack that was in there made this one not survive. Luckily, I have lots of other ones that I'm working on. This is E6000. This is a great glue and it's what's going to be used to attach the stones to the mugs. You see here I have most of the mugs ready with their stones waiting for the uh, waiting for the glue. You will notice that this is not petrified wood. I got the secondary piece of petrified wood that I had prepared and it made it through almost all of it. And then when I put it in the borax wash, it cracked in half. So now we have this beautiful piece of Jasper here instead. You just gotta work with what you got. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing. If you'd like to share in these treasures, check out my Etsy store, Katie Did Rocks. The link is in the description below. And so I thought it was probably time to combine two of my great loves, clay and pottery. Clay and pottery. <laughs>